Hello, my name is Timothy Sullivan, and today we're going to be exploring Niigata Sake together. This video webinar is sponsored by the National Tax Agency of Japan, and I'm so delighted to be with you to explore and discover the most wonderful sakes in Japan, those from Niigata Prefecture. Before we get started, let me do a brief self-introduction. I got started studying sake back in 2005, and for 15 years, I've been a sake educator based out of New York City. I'm also a sake samurai and a sake sommelier. In 2017, I had the great honor to live for one year in Niigata Prefecture and do a sake brewing internship. Based on this experience, I've become a huge fan of Niigata sake. And I'm so happy to be with you today to introduce you to this wonderful prefecture and the amazing sakes that are produced there. Let's take a look at our agenda for today. I'd like to start out by introducing you to the geography and some of the nature of Niigata prefecture. And then we're going to be talking about sake culture in particular in Niigata. And then we'll review some very interesting points on how to enjoy the sake from Niigata. So without further ado, let's get started. Let's start by looking at some of the geography and nature of Niigata Prefecture. Now, if we look at the entire map of Japan, you'll see that Niigata is located on Honshu or the main island of Japan. And it faces the Sea of Japan. That's the western coast of Honshu. Now, if we zoom in, in this picture, you can see some of the topography of Niigata. And there's a few important features we want to pay attention to here. You'll notice that on the eastern edge of the prefecture, that's where the highest mountains are. It's uh, part of the Japanese Alps chain. And these mountains run like a backbone along the eastern edge of Niigata Prefecture. There's also beautiful plains and valleys. Uh, but one of the premier features of the geography of Niigata is beautiful mountain ranges that you'll see throughout the prefecture. Now, with the position of Niigata Prefecture, there's one phenomena that happens when cold air comes from Siberia over the Sea of Japan. It picks up a vast amount of moisture. And when it comes to Japan, it hits those mountains in Niigata Prefecture. And on the western side of the mountains, it dumps a large amount of snow. Niigata Prefecture is really in the crosshairs when it comes to precipitation and snow. This is one of the defining characteristics of this region. It's known throughout Japan as Yuki Guni or snow country. And that's because of its very unique geographical location. Now, these snowy winters are again, one of the most defining features of Niigata. But I don't want you to think for a second that Niigata is all just about the snow and just about the winter. Niigata has four beautiful seasons. So beyond the deep, deep snow of winter, there is also a beautiful springtime. And very often, as I saw when I lived in Niigata, you can have the cherry blossoms, in the valley and you still see beautiful snow on the top of the mountains where it's still quite cold. It's a beautiful sight. And this is something that is very often seen in Niigata. After the spring, we're going to move on to the warm, but not too humid summers of Niigata. One thing you'll see around the prefecture is the vibrant green fields of rice. 
The rice tends to turn yellow and golden when it gets more towards the autumn, but in the height of summer, you're going to see the vibrant green color throughout the prefecture of the many, many rice fields in Niigata. When we do move to autumn, the autumn colors are beautiful. And beyond the changing colors of the leaves, you'll see those golden rice fields waving in the wind as well. Now, there are a few really important things that people think of when they think of Niigata. And one of the most important for sake and for eating is rice. Niigata is one of the epicenters of rice production in Japan. And there are rice fields located throughout the prefecture. This is not only used for sake making, but also for eating. Some of the most expensive eating rice in Japan is grown in Niigata. So it is a real home for rice, which is central to Japanese culture. Now, another very important thing that we get based on the climate and all that snow is some of the most beautiful water. Niigata is really well known for exceedingly soft water. And by that, we mean very low minerality. This water is very important. Uh, we get that through snow melt, but also it really informs the taste of the sake. The vast amounts of water make sake brewing uh, a real specialty of the Niigata region. So we have rice, we have water, and of course we have the people of Niigata. They've lived for so long with the harsh winters, the mild summers, the delicious rice, and the wonderful water. And this has been the perfect place for sake culture to develop. And now we're going to talk a little bit about that sake culture and how it's grown in Niigata. So let's take a look now at sake culture. And what are some of the unique things related to sake in Niigata Prefecture? Now, because of the perfect alignment of rice, water, and people, Niigata has become a home base for sake brewing in Japan. There are 89 sake breweries in Niigata Prefecture, and this is more than any other prefecture. Now, you may think logically that because it has the most number of breweries, that it has the largest volume of sake production. But that's actually not true. Niigata ranks third in volume of sake production. One of the reasons for that is that many, many Niigata breweries focus on small batch craft sake production. Because of this, I often call Niigata the Napa Valley of Japan. This is an area of Japan that focuses on craft and tradition. And this is especially true for their sake production. Given the long history of sake production in Niigata Prefecture, there is a very famous Toji Guild. Now, the Toji Guilds are the master brewer guilds, and these really guide the regional style of a given prefecture. And for Niigata, the very well-known Toji Guild for this region is called the Echigo Toji. It's one of the big three Toji Guilds in Japan. Now, there's a few other cultural aspects to sake in Niigata that are really unique. One is sake no jin. This is the largest sake festival in Japan, and it's held in Niigata City. Thousands and thousands of people will come to celebrate and enjoy sake over a long weekend. And it is a wonderful way to try sake from all of the breweries in Niigata. I was able to go one year and it was an unforgettable experience. Another really unique aspect to sake culture in Niigata is 
Niigata University's Sakeology Program. This is a special program developed by Niigata University to promote sake culture, marketing, and many different aspects to promoting the success of the sake industry. It's a unique program that you won't find anywhere else in Japan. And it really speaks to the dedication that Niigata Prefecture has to promoting and really engaging with sake culture. Another wonderful aspect of sake culture in Niigata is the Niigata Sake School. Now, this is a place where young people can come and learn the art and the skill of sake brewing. They're trained by more senior sake brewers, and it's a way for the generations to pass on information, skill, and knowledge of sake brewing. And this helps preserve local sake culture in Niigata and ensure that they are producing some of the very best sakes in Japan. Another wonderful aspect of Niigata culture is the Yuki Muro. So that means snow storage cellar or snow storage facility. And this is a building or a room that's insulated. And on one side of the room, they put in a big pile of snow. And on the other side, they would store whatever they want to age in the cold. This could be beef. This could be vegetables. This could be sake. This low temperature and high humidity aging creates the perfect environment for deepening flavors and creating more intense umami. The Yukimuro is a traditional natural refrigerator that's long been a part of Niigata culture. This is being revived and reborn for the modern world and sake is a part of that as well. Another expression of sake culture that's really popular in Niigata is kanzukuri. Kanzukuri is the art of brewing sake during the coldest winter months, cold temperature brewing. And because Niigata is so famous for its deep snows, low consistent temperatures, this is really a perfect region to explore the art and science of Kansukuri or cold temperature brewing. It produces some of the most elegant, smoothest, and most delicious sakes. And when these techniques were first developed to produce sake in the coldest months, Niigata was really an epicenter for development of this particular style of brewing. Now, a final really fun aspect to sake and Niigata culture is something we call yuki mi sake. This is sake that you would sip on for viewing a snowy scene. So if you're relaxing by the fire, looking out the window, seeing the snow fall, this is called yuki mi or snow viewing. And if you're sipping on sake and enjoying some sake on the side, that's yuki mi sake. It's a very charming and wonderful way to enjoy sake. So the next time you're looking out at a snowstorm, get some Niigata sake and try Yukimi sake for yourself. Now let's take a look at enjoying Niigata sake. There's many ways we can enhance our enjoyment of this style of sake. And uh, let's take a look and see some of the best ways to get the most out of enjoying Niigata sake. Now, the first thing to be aware of is that there is a regional style to Niigata sake. This is called Tanre Karakuchi. So Tanre means clean or beautiful. And Karakuchi means dry or crisp. So when you hear Tanre Karakuchi, I want you to think of sakes that are crisp, clean, light, and dry. This is the traditional and regional style of Niigata, and it is 
absolutely delicious. This style of sake pairs very widely with a wide variety of foods, and it is a wonderful supporting actor when you're pairing food and sake together. Now, while this is the dominant style in Niigata, Niigata breweries make many, many different varieties. So whatever style of sake you like, you are bound to find that available in Niigata as well. Unpasteurized sake, cloudy sake, aged sake. There's many, many different varieties, but that Tanre Karakuchi, crisp, clean, and dry, that is the regional specialty. So please look out for that. Now, how should you enjoy sake? Sometimes when I talk to people about sake, there's concerned about not being able to enjoy sake at home because they don't have the right glassware or sake set. Well, I'm here to tell you that all you need to enjoy sake is a wine glass, which almost everyone has at home. So feel free to enjoy your sake at home with just a simple wine glass. White wine glass is the perfect size. But if you want to get into the sake service wear a little bit, there's a few different cups and styles of drinking that you can try at home. The most traditional is a sake zuki, which is a, a very shallow, small cup. That's almost more of a ceremonial style cup. A masu is a square wooden cedar box. That's also fun to try and drink out of. And you may have seen those in Japanese restaurants out and about. The most common traditional cup for enjoying sake is either a guinomi, which is a larger ceramic style cup, or an ochoko, which is more straight-sided and perhaps a bit smaller, smooth-sided uh, ceramic sake cup. And very often when you get sake served in restaurants, it may come in a tokuri. That's a traditional ceramic or porcelain sake carafe. You can experiment with these to enjoy your sake, or again, as I said, just enjoy it out of a wine glass. Experiment and see what works best for you. I'm sure you'll enjoy your sake. One big question when enjoying sake is about sake temperature. Should sake be served warm, room temperature, chilled? What is the best way? The good news is that there's no strict rules about enjoying sake. There can be delicious sakes at warm temperatures, at room temperature, or chilled. One rule of thumb is that the more floral and fruity a sake is, those tend to be best enjoyed chilled. Sakes that are drier and a bit more earthy, those generally are really wonderful and bring out more umami when you serve them warm. But please enjoy your sake at the temperature you like, experiment, and find what you enjoy. There's no strict rules here, and it is all about finding the temperature that you like for your sake. The fact that sake can be served at so many different temperatures is one of the charms of sake, and it makes it so versatile and easy to enjoy. So have fun and experiment with sake temperature. Another topic we have to touch on when it comes to sake from Niigata and enjoying is sake and food pairing. The photo that you see here is Hegi Soba. This is a soba noodle that is a specialty of Niigata. It's absolutely delicious. And that Tanre Karakuchi, that crisp, clean and dry style of sake pairs beautiful with this type of soba noodle. But as I mentioned earlier, the special styles of sake from Niigata are very flexible when it comes to food pairing. You can enjoy them with many styles of Japanese cuisine. I uh, think sashimi, sushi, yakitori, or these delicious soba noodles that again are a specialty of Niigata. Interestingly, you can also enjoy sake very easily with non-Japanese food as well. I really enjoy having sake with uh, stews, with grilled chicken, and believe it or not, sake pairs beautifully with pizza as well. So experiment, 
And there is lots of flexibility when it comes to the flavors and aromas of Niigata sake. And you can have a lot of fun trying to pair Niigata sake with non-Japanese food. It's an area that's ripe for exploration. And I want you to enjoy and experiment with all kinds of food and sake pairings. One question I get a lot is, where can I buy sake? How can I find sake? And I really want to encourage you, when you visit your local wine shop, liquor store, or any place where you buy your fine wines or beer, uh, to ask them about premium sake from Niigata as well. This is one of the best ways to ensure that you have a great local selection of high quality sakes is to be sure to ask your retailers to order and stock these sakes. If you don't have a wine or liquor retailer nearby that can source these sakes for you, there are also good retailers online that ship to many of our 50 states. And you can uh, ask for sakes from Niigata and look for these at your uh, preferred online retailers for sake. And there are some specialty online retailers for sake as well. So uh, take a little bit of time and research and talk to your local retailers and see what Niigata sakes they can offer for you. I'm sure you'll discover some of your favorite brands from this region before you know it. And I hope you'll enjoy pairing and sharing those sakes with your friends. So I want to thank you for joining me today in this exploration of sakes from Niigata Prefecture. I hope that you enjoyed learning about uh, the regionality, the geography, and a little bit about the sake culture in Niigata. Niigata is a beautiful region of Japan and it is blessed with beautiful nature, the most stunning mountains, and some of the most diverse weather you'll find in Japan. All of these things come together to create some of the most delicious sake. And this is one of the blessings of this beautiful region of Japan. When you have a chance, I hope that you'll discover and explore the delicious sakes from Niigata. Thank you for watching today and kampai.